everyone, welcome to the Plant Power Cyclist YouTube channel. I'm Andy, I'm your host. Today is a special day because we're going to go visit some of the most interesting places in Turkey near Şanlıurfa, or the City of Prophets. This area boasts some of the hidden gems of archaeology that not many tourists go visit, not even archaeologists themselves, due to the close proximity to the Syrian border, as you can see from the map. So I will take you there so you can get a glimpse of what these sites have to offer. AJ and I were lucky enough to meet an archaeologist in Yamorlu, who not only offered to take us on a tour, but to host us as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. <laughs> We left Shanli Urfa and headed towards Tek Tek National Park. After only cycling 10 kilometers, AJ had her first accident. I watched her gracefully swerve off the road and into a ditch. Luckily, the worst part of her fall was just a scratch on her hand. When we got to the town of Kassas, which means blood in Kurdish, we stopped to treat her battle wound. Kemal came over to assist us and eventually treated us to some food, tea, and a tour of his place. These birds will always fly back to home, no matter where you release them. We were so popular in this village, we even got interviewed live on Facebook. We were stopped by the police twice. The first time was the standards, hello, how are you, can we check your IDs? Then 15 minutes later, they came back and said, sir, I'm sorry, your time is up in Turkey, you need to leave. I looked at AJ and said, what the is going on. I'm not leaving Turkey. And the ID I had showed them was this red one. It had expired two months before. So I showed them the ID that really mattered, which is this blue one. It gave me an extra two months. When they saw the blue ID, they said, okay, sir, uh, enjoy the rest of your trip. Um, we're here to protect you, so please let us know if there are any problems. And we parted ways. As you can see, the road got steep. AJ did not like it. Eventually, we came to a village called Karakush, where we asked if we could camp at the school. However, we were invited to stay with a family. They gave us two options for sleeping, inside or on the roof. It was a bit too windy for my taste, and I really don't know how people sleep with dogs barking all night long. In the end, it was a cool experience, but probably a first and last for me. When we got to Yamurlu, which means rainy in Turkish, luck was on our side because we met a group of archaeologists and volunteers. The head archaeologist Yusuf offered to take us on a tour later in the day. He would take us to some of the other sites nearby. By bicycle, this would take one to two days, but by car, it would just be a few hours. Somatar comes from the word Matar in Arabic, which means rain because they receive an incredible amount of rainfall in the winter. According to researchers, Somatar was a pagan religion center in the 2nd century AD. This outdoor sanctuary, that is the sacred hill, represents Mare Lahe, Lord of the Gods, the chief god of this religion, and constitutes the center of settlement. All the rock tombs excavated have been able to see the holy hill, and the further away from the hill you get, the less tombs you have. So far, 72 tombs have been found dating back to the early Bronze Age and the Roman Empire. Evidence has shown that it was an important political center and necropolis. They believe seven temples were built around this hill consecrated to the planets. Each temple takes on the representation of one of the following, the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Pogdan's cave is a large underground cave temple where we find embossments depicting important people and gods during the time of 150 to 200 AD. This place was thought to have been consecrated to the moon god Sin. It is also believed that Prophet Moses made a village here when he escaped from Pharaoh and created a well by using his miraculous scepter. We met the mayor of Yamurlu, who at the time was 84 years old, had 16 children, a five-year-old child and was looking for wife number five to be between the ages of 24 to 26. He said, Andy, do you have any sisters? I said, sorry, bro. 
She's a bit too old for you. She's 34. No, 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 it's okay, Andy, it's okay. Uh, 34 is fine. I said, well, you're gonna have to convince her to divorce her husband, leave everything, pack it all up, and fly out to Yamorlu. Easy, bro, easy. Our first stop was Shuayip Shehir. This place is full of underground cities and is thought to be larger than Chatohoyuk. However, no one wants to come and work here due to the close proximity to the Syrian border. With so much history buried beneath the surface here, one can only wonder what might be uncovered in the future. According to the locals and some archaeologists, it is here where Moses married Zipporah, the daughter of Jethro. Our next stop was Hanel Barur, which means goat manure in Arabic. It's an ancient caravanserai along the remote Silk Road between Haran and Baghdad. The owner of this place said that after me, they will fill this place with goat manure, hence the name. However, after my time spent here, I think it's fair to say that he mixed up his animals. Our next stop was the Bazda Caves. Archaeologists have found writing on the walls that says the stones they carved out from this cave were used to create buildings in the once very powerful and important city, Haran. Which by the way is our next and final stop. To me, I found the beehive mud brick houses very interesting. They were designed to be cool during the summer, yet warm during winter. The cone-shaped roofs help deal with the torrential rainfall, the strong winds, and can even withstand earthquakes. Haran hosts the oldest university in the world. However, you won't see many students coming here for classes, as there are only a few stones left standing, after Mongolian invaders destroyed it in 1260. I would like to say thanks to Kamal and this amazing family in Karakush. And a very special thanks to this man for everything he did for us. He helped us see sites we didn't even know existed. I would like to leave you guys with one last thought. I had really wanted to go to Haran, but we had decided not to go because it was out of the way and extremely hot. However, I believe when you put your mind to something, the world will conspire to make it happen. In our case, it did. So guys, get out and travel and make your dreams and passions come true. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.